the mysterious voices of the night. A medley of hoots, croaks, peeps, and snorts have long fascinated and sometimes frightened humankind. But as eerie as these sounds may seem, there is really nothing to fear, for they are the voices of delightful and harmless creatures, the frogs, birds, mammals, and insects that inhabit our natural surroundings. Once these fascinating animals become known, their strange and perhaps unsettling sounds will seem like the voices of friends greeting us as we explore the outdoors after dark. This is Lang Elliott of Nature Sound Studio. I'm pleased to have you with me on this night sound experience. During spring and early summer, the night sound experience begins shortly after sundown, when our native thrushes, including the wood thrush, viri, hermit thrush, and Swainson's thrush, end their day with a final burst of song. Imagine that it is dusk in eastern North America. Frogs call from a nearby swamp. A wood thrush brightens the twilight with flute-like song, and a viri soon joins in adding its ethereal melody to the evening chorus. In forested thickets of the north woods and many western states, the hermit thrush enlivens the edge of night with an exquisite song. Heard here alternating with the upward spiraling melody of a distant Swainson's thrush. The musical thrushes grow silent as they prepare for sleep, but there are other birds that spend the day asleep and then awaken at dusk, ready for night-long activity. These include the night jars. And there's one now, the forest-dwelling whippoorwill, whose whistled notes spring forth from eastern forests just as thrush songs fade away. Although primarily an eastern species, the whippoorwill also inhabits dry woodlands of the southwest. There, it sings a rough and burry song. Traveling now to the sandy pine woods of the southeast, we encounter another vocal night jar, the Chuck Will's Widow, whose nighttime song is easily confused with that of the whippoorwill.
Among the sagebrush and chaparral habitats of the West lives our smallest native night jar, the common poor will. Like its relatives, it seems to whistle its own name, poor will or poor willop, repeated over and over again. The whippoorwill, chuckwill's widow, and poor will sing from perches or from the ground, but they also spend time flying about in the night sky catching insects. Our most widespread night jar, the common night hawk, also catches insects on the wing. Night hawks resemble large bats and make nasal calls, peent, peent, as they fly about in the air. Here comes one now circling above a southern pine wood as chuck wills sing in the background. The male night hawk performs an incredible courtship display. Scarcely visible in the dark sky, he silently dives toward the ground and then swoops up at the last moment, making an explosive ruffled sound with his wings. The night jars are only one among several groups of birds that regularly sound off at night. Several very interesting species belong to the shorebird group. These include the American woodcock, common snipe, killdeer, and black-necked stilt. Perhaps the most fascinating of these is the woodcock, an eastern species, a plump, rather silly-looking bird with a long, fleshy beak that it uses to probe in moist ground for earthworms at night. In the spring, Male woodcocks fly to open meadows at dusk and court females by strutting about on the ground, making a nasal call, suggestive of the nighthawk's peent. What comes next is an extraordinary performance. The strutting male suddenly takes flight. Silhouetted against the fading sunset, the male woodcock makes a continuous high-pitched twittering sound with his wings. He circles above his territory, rising higher and higher in a spiraling ascent toward the heavens. Finally, at the apex of his flight, he suddenly drops from the sky and falls earthward with an unpredictable zigzag motion, making chirp-like whistles as he descends. Having landed on the ground, the woodcock peints several times and then takes flight again, repeating his remarkable display. In marshy areas of the north, there lives another unique shorebird, 
the common snipe. During courtship flights, the male snipe makes an eerie winnowing sound by spreading his stiff tail feathers as he periodically swoops downward. Courtship flights often occur at dusk, but may be repeated all night long when the moon is bright. Listen, a snipe winnowing overhead as frogs sound off in a moonlit northern marsh. One of our most widespread shorebirds is the killdeer, a member of the plover group. Killdeer nest on barren ground, often far away from water. This familiar day active species regularly feeds at night and may fly to wet areas in search of food. Imagine that it's midnight in a southern marsh. The piercing calls of an alarmed killdeer rise above the busy night sound ambience. In another section of the marsh, we startle yet another shorebird. These are the distress calls of a black-necked stilt, perhaps a pair of them. We cannot see the sound makers, but we can imagine them in the darkness, nervously strutting about on a muddy bank, supported by spindly, stilt-like legs. A variety of other birds frequent marshy areas, and many vocalize at night. Our native geese and ducks are no exception. Let us visit a northern marsh at night. Frogs chorus nearby. As we approach the water's edge, a flock of mallard ducks alert us to their presence, the hens quacking loudly as they spring from the surface of the water. The ducks fly away, and all we hear are the calls of frogs. No, listen. The clamoring honks of a flock of Canada geese flying in V formation and heading directly toward us.
Of all the voices of the night, the sounds made by owls attract our attention like no others. We hear their distant hoots and screeches and think of them perched somewhere in the darkness, waiting to swoop down on unsuspecting prey. In forested and swampy areas of eastern North America, a commonly heard owl sound is the hooting of the barred owl. Who cooks for you? Who cooks for you all? The barred owl seems to exclaim. Barred owls make a variety of other interesting sounds. When members of a pair come together, they often hoot excitedly, like noisy monkeys participating in a vocal reunion. Now listen to this extraordinary example of two barred owls hooting it up. <laughs> Young barred owls don't hoot, but they do make hair-raising screeches and other odd sounds. These are thought to be begging calls. One of our most widespread native owls is the great horned owl, a large owl with prominent ear-like tufts of feathers on its head. The typical call of this species is a low-pitched series of about five hoots. Hoo, 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 hoo. The female's call is thought to be higher in pitch than the male's. Immature great horned owls make loud screeching whistles, a surprising sound that has baffled many a listener. Some owls never hoot. For instance, our two native screech owls make unusual sounds that most people would not attribute to owls. Take, for example, the eastern screech owl, a small owl that frequents suburban woodlots throughout much of the east. Surprisingly, this little owl does not actually screech. Rather, it makes an eerie, down-slurred whinny, reminiscent of the whinny of a horse.
The eastern screech owl has another common call, a soft dreamlike trill. If you hear this sound in your neighborhood after dark, you can rest assured that a tiny screech owl is perched somewhere nearby. The other native North American screech owl is the western screech owl, a common inhabitant of suburban settings in the west. Its most frequent call is an accelerating series of soft whistles or toots. Perhaps the most blood-curdling of all owl sounds is the hissy screech of the barn owl, a pale-colored species that often nest in abandoned barns or silos. Imagine entering an old silo in the middle of the night. There, in the darkness, something moving. A ghostly barn owl cowering against the concrete wall. Numerous other species of owls inhabit North America. One of my favorites is the northern saw-wet owl, a small round-headed owl inhabiting dense evergreen forest. The saw breeding call is a long series of tooting whistles that sound like they could just as well come from some kind of electronic instrument hidden somewhere in the dark woods. As we've listened to the many night sound recordings, especially those made in marshes and swamps in the spring, we've noticed a variety of other interesting sounds in the background. Quite often, these are made by frogs and toads. So let's consider these fascinating animals in more detail by sampling some of North America's most common and most outstanding frog and toad sounds. Let us begin with a tiny tree frog whose piercing bird-like peeps dominate wet areas during the spring months throughout much of the east, the spring peeper. Along the west coast, an entirely different tree frog sounds off in the spring. You've probably heard its call in various movies made in Hollywood. It's our only native frog that actually goes ribbit, the Pacific tree frog.
One of my favorite frog calls is that of the pickerel frog, an eastern species with square spots on its back. The pickerel frog makes outlandish snoring sounds. A variety of species of chorus frogs are found in North America. Most of these have clicking calls that sound like someone rubbing their fingernail across the teeth of a plastic comb. Here's the western chorus frog. The tiny cricket frogs are only one inch long. They make metallic clicking sounds. The call series of the northern cricket frog starts out slow and then speeds up before coming to a close. In the east, a familiar summertime frog sound is the throaty loom, loom, loom of green frogs, a species that is easy to imitate. Frog sounds range from high to low. Usually, little frogs make high sounds and big frogs make low sounds. At the low end, we find the extraordinary bellowing notes of one of our largest native frogs, the bullfrog. Another memorable low-pitched sound is the grunting call of the pig frog, a common species that inhabits marshes and swamps along the Gulf Coast. Transport yourself to a southern swamp on a warm, sultry night. Listen to the grunts of pig frogs, the occasional link-link of green frogs, and finally the glick-glick-glick-glick of cricket frogs. Our native toads also make breeding calls, and some of these are quite melodious. In the east, 
The springtime landscape comes alive with the long dreamlike trills of American toads. In sharp contrast to the melodious calls of the American toad, the Fowler's toad of the East and the Woodhouse's toad of the West and Midwest make harsh buzzy trills that remind me of the persistent cries of a small child. Wah! This marks the end of side one of A Guide to Night Sounds. Please turn the cassette over to begin side two. Hi friends, this is Lang Elliott of Nature Sound Studio. Welcome to side two of A Guide to Night Sounds. The noisy chorus of frog and toad sounds is a dominant feature of marshy areas throughout North America, but one should be aware that many other animal groups also sound off in marshes at night, and some make rather surprising sounds. One such group includes the rails and moorhens. These timid, chicken-like marsh birds are active both day and night, and are more often heard than seen. Take for example the clapper rail, a widespread salt marsh species whose sharp cack-like calls enliven mosquito-infested tidal marshes even in the dead of night. Clapper rail has another interesting vocalization, a sudden outburst of grunting cacks, evoked when the same call is given by neighboring individuals. There is another rail that is sometimes heard in salt marsh habitats, but this one is exceedingly rare and secretive. It is the tiny black rail, our smallest native species. Lucky indeed are those who experience the black rail's sweet call as it rises above marsh vegetation in the dark of the night. Kiki Kerr. Moving on to freshwater marsh, we are certain to find North America's most common rail, the Sora, whose rising cur we is heard here, along with the nighttime calls of spring peepers and pickerel frog.
Another widespread rail of freshwater wetlands is the Virginia rail. Its distinctive call is a series of staccato notes. Kick, kick, kadick, kadick, kadick. Heard here along with a breeding chorus of green tree frogs. Of all the rail sounds, perhaps the most unusual is produced by the yellow rail, a small species that breeds in shallow sedge marshes of northern United States and Canada. Its breeding call sounds like someone tapping two stones together with an odd tempo. Under pale moonlight, we have penetrated to the middle of an extensive wet meadow. There, hidden among the sedges, a yellow rail vocalizes incessantly, while gray tree frog, spring peeper, and whippoorwill call in the background. Closely related to the rails is the common moorhen, a species which breeds in marshes of the east, south, and southwest. At times, a marsh may literally erupt with the moorhen's wild, excited calls, which spread through the marsh like a wave of laughter as different individuals sound off, one after the other. Another relative of the rails is the sandhill crane, a long-necked and long-legged marsh dweller with an impressive six-foot wingspan. At night, sandhill cranes roost quietly in remote locations, but may suddenly break the nighttime calm with rattling guttural calls that echo across the landscape like ancient cries from a prehistoric age. If we travel to the marshes and swamps of Florida, we find a peculiar wading bird that is the lone survivor of an ancient line. This long-legged bird is the limpkin, an exotic night-active species whose loud wailing screams earn it the name of night crier. Creow! Creow! At night, in Limpkin country, we're also likely to cross a rather frightening animal, a reptilian giant, whose bellowing roars seem to rise from foul-smelling swamp mud, like gaseous belches escaping from deep within the earth, the alligator.
Anyone who frequents marshy areas during the day is probably familiar with the herons, long-legged wading birds often misidentified as cranes. One of our largest and most widespread species is the great blue heron, which stands about five feet tall. Great blues often feed at night. When disturbed, they signal alarm with a harsh croak, sometimes given in a series. A special group of herons known as night herons are largely nocturnal feeders. The call of the wide-ranging black-crowned night heron is a low-pitched walk. A truly remarkable member of the heron group is the American bittern, a shy, drab-colored wading bird that hides in thick marsh vegetation. The bittern's extraordinary breeding call is amazing to behold. Resonant and pump-like in quality, it echoes across marshes at dusk and dawn, and sometimes in the middle of the night. Most night active birds are timid and exotic looking, like the herons, rails, owls, and night jars. We generally do not think of small songbirds as being night birds, but there exist a variety of species that are active during the dark hours. For instance, among the wrens, the marsh wren and sedge wren, both marsh dwellers, regularly sing at night. The marsh wren song is reedy and gurgling, often ending with a grating chatter. Listen to this night active marsh wren, singing along with a cricket from cattails at the edge of a salt marsh, while a foghorn sounds off in the distance. Another night active wren, the sedge wren, prefers grassy or sedgy marshes of the upper Midwest and Canada. Its dry, chattering night song is heard here, along with the distant trills of a gray tree frog and the incessant clicking of a yellow rail. Some members of the sparrow family also sing at night, and the white-throated sparrow provides a very good example. Imagine that we're camped next to a marsh in the Canadian North Woods. Listen for the clear whistled songs of a white throat rising above a green frog and mink frog chorus.
Perhaps the best known of all the night-singing songbirds are the mimic thrushes, a group that includes the catbird, mockingbird, and various thrashers. Here, a lone catbird sings a beautiful night song as frogs croak and bellow in the distance. As the cool nights of spring give way to the warm and often sultry nights of summer, the chirps, trills, and grating chatter of insects come to dominate the nighttime soundscape. These sounds are generally made only by male insects, who have special sound-making organs located on their wings. Crickets are responsible for many insect sounds. The calls of different species are difficult to tell apart, but there are some that are easy to recognize. For instance, the melodic chirp-like trills of the delicate snowy tree cricket are given at an even pace that is temperature related. In fact, the snowy tree cricket is a living thermometer. If one counts the number of chirps occurring in 15 seconds and then adds 40, one will have a close approximation of the air temperature in Fahrenheit. Another cricket with evenly spaced chirps is the mole cricket, an odd-looking subterranean insect that often sings from the entrance to its muddy burrow. It has one of the lowest pitched songs of all the crickets. Mole crickets and snowy tree crickets give regularly repeated chirps. In contrast, many other species of crickets produce extended or continuous high-pitched trills, such as the penetrating breeding call of this ground cricket. Another common group of insect noisemakers includes the katydids. Katydids are predominantly green, have exceedingly long antennae, and are more often heard than seen. The northern true katydid is common east of the Rocky Mountains. The harsh breeding calls of the male can be heard coming from treetops at night in late summer and autumn. Other species of katydids have similar harsh calls, and sometimes large numbers of individuals call in unison. Listen to this raucous chorus of katydids calling loudly in a southern swamp, interrupted only by the hoots of a barred owl.
certain grasshoppers also sound off at night. Their harsh breeding calls are usually very high-pitched, some actually falling above the range of human hearing. Listen to the very high notes of a cone-headed grasshopper, making its dissonant insect music from tall grass at the edge of a highway. The insects that we call beetles do not have a reputation for making sounds, but one group, the longhorn beetles, have a grub-like larval stage that feeds on the inner bark of dead or dying trees. The larvae of certain species are called pine sawyers, and their chewing sounds can be heard at night where pine logs have been left on the ground to rot. Thus far in our exploration of night sounds, we have enjoyed listening to various species of birds, frogs, insects, and reptiles. But there is another group of night active animals that we haven't heard from, the mammals. Among my favorite mammalian sounds are the barks, yips, and howls of the coyote, which can be heard at night over much of North America, from the deserts and mountains of the west to the backwoods of the east. One of the most common and widespread of our native mammals is the raccoon, a species that is readily adapted to suburban settings. When quarreling, raccoons whine, squeal, and even bark, and sometimes produce a blood-curdling performance that one could easily confuse with a cat fight. Another well-known night active mammal is the American beaver. If one visits a beaver colony at night, a beaver is likely to respond in alarm by slapping its broad tail against the surface of the water. For food, beavers chew the bark off tree limbs. Listen to this individual, chewing loudly in the darkness, no doubt enjoying his vegetarian meal. There is a very special beaver sound that few people know. It is the plaintive moaning of the young, which is usually heard at night, coming from inside the beaver's dome-like den.
another night active bark chewing mammal is the porcupine, a solitary species that is usually silent. But porcupines do occasionally vocalize, and their sounds are often very expressive, like these whining squeals, given as one porcupine rebuffs the advances of another. Like the porcupine, the aquatic river otter is generally thought to be silent. But river otters do make sounds, and one of their most prominent is a loud snort, heard here along with low growls, given as an otter visits its cave-like feeding den at water's edge. Otters are not the only mammal to make snorting sounds. In fact, the most startling snorts of all are made by a large terrestrial mammal, the white-tailed deer. When alarmed, deer expel air with great intensity, producing loud, airy snorts that echo across the nighttime landscape. Having covered so many incredible sounds, hoots, croaks, peeps, and even snorts, we near the end of our night sound exploration. But we cannot close without enjoying the extraordinary night sounds of a very special animal. For those who frequent the northern lake country, the spectacular night sounds made by this one species stand out above all others. These are the tremolos, whales, and yodels of a well-known water bird, the common loon. The loon has three outstanding vocalizations. One is a wavering tremolo, which indicates alarm. Sometimes, Members of a pair alternate and overlap tremolo calls to produce an excited tremolo duet. Loons also make calls that may be mistaken for the howl of a wolf. This is the wail of the loon. Such magical sounds, but of all the loon vocalizations, 
the most complex and emotionally moving is the yodel of the male, given while on territory, early in the breeding season. Imagine that you are camped along the shore of a Northwoods lake. Spring peepers call from a nearby marsh. Moonlight reflects off the surface of the water, and loons sound off, one after the other, their calls echoing up and down the lake. This is Lang Elliott of Nature Sound Studio. Thank you for joining me on this night sound experience. <laughs>